Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at tape diagrams, trying to understand what they are and how they're used, and also a couple of shortfalls with them, um, some limitations that come with using tape diagrams. So first off, <clears throat> let's just give a very basic overview. A tape diagram is a visual way of showing your understanding or a visual way of learning. Math teachers have actually used visual diagrams and manipulatives for years. Let me show you a couple that you may be familiar with. We've sometimes used these stacking blocks. Perhaps you've seen these place values. Or maybe like me when I was learning division at first, I learned it in this way by putting little beans inside of the places of an egg carton. Either way, tape diagrams basically do largely the same thing. Let's take a look at how we would use tape diagram with addition. If we have this addition problem, 4 plus 3 equals 7, we could write it out in a tape diagram like this. Typically, the way that we would write it is having equal cell spaces like this, like 4 equal cells, 4 and 3 more. We could also do it in this way where we filled in four and three more. And then we would maybe draw some lines and say four and three is seven. Again, it's a visual way of showing addition. So instead of just memorizing that four plus three equals seven, we can actually show it. You could do it with manipulatives or blocks or whatever, but it's just a way of showing that addition means bringing those two things together. And it's really important that we do have those equal cells so that those cells are an equal size. And that helps us when we move forward with other things that have to do with our tape diagrams. Now let's talk about subtraction. Subtraction is taking away. And the way that we would visually show this is actually a couple of different ways. One, we could start out with eight and then actually take away two. And that's a traditional way of doing that, maybe having a pile of beans or, or something that students can actually move, and they physically take it away to show that what's left is six. What we can also do using a tape diagram, a more traditional way of showing it would be this. We start with eight, and we mark our total as eight. Then we mark the pieces underneath it as two and some unknown value. That way we're showing eight, take away two, what are we left with? And we have six. Same basic concept shown in two different ways using tape diagrams in a little bit of a different way. The one on the right is a little bit more traditional where we keep it in a one, one solid tape. And the one on the left is more of physically moving things away. And that shows more of, um, you, you know, using manipulatives and such to actually show that you're taking away those. Now, multiplication, you might say, how would we do multiplication? I don't feel like drawing 30 cells that are the same exact size. And you're absolutely right. That would be absurd until we get to the next diagram and I actually do something like that. But let's go ahead and look at multiplication and see how could we possibly do it. We have our diagram. We have cells that are exactly the same size and we have five of them. What I'm going to do is label each of those cells with a number six, meaning that each of those cells represents six. So then we could show that multiplication is repeat adding, or we could multiply six times five to get our total of 30, or five times six. Either way, this is how a tape diagram is going to show multiplication. It's going to show equal numbers in each cell adding up to a total amount or when we multiply them we get that total amount. This here is very important if you're going to continue to use tape diagrams beyond just the basic operations because we'll start putting things into those cells that are different other than just numbers and again as long as each cell is equal and drawing them in equal size helps with that visual. It definitely makes it so that um, you can use this beyond just standard multiplication. All right, final operation, division. How would you show division 
using a tape diagram. I want to tell you, this slide has more animated pieces than um, almost any slide I've ever made in my life because I decided to use the number 27 divided by 3. And at a certain point, I started realizing that it was absurd, but we're, I stuck with it. So that means you have to stick with it watching all of these animations as well. When we're dealing with a division question, what we do is we take the total amount, 27, and we divide it into three even groups. Now, if you are first doing division and you don't know that 27 divided by 3 is 9, a way that you can do this is to start with 27 objects and move them individually into the groups. Now you have to move them into the groups evenly. So one will go into there and then one goes into there and then one goes into there and we continue. And now you see why my animations took so long with this because with 27 <laughs> dots moving to different places, it became pretty complicated. So there we go. We are definitely moving all 27 into those cells and they become even groups of 9, 9, and 9. That shows how division works. And if you are a parent watching this or, um, or a teacher or someone who understands division a little bit more, this is also a great way to show how remainders work, right? If we didn't have a, a division question that worked out evenly, you would have like two left over and those would be our remainder. But in this case, it worked out evenly, thank goodness. But there's how division might look inside of a tape diagram. Now, I just want to end with a little bit of why would we ever use tape diagrams? We did say that it was a visual way of showing what you're doing. I'm going to list out three benefits and then a cautionary note about some of the limitations for tape diagrams. First, it can help people explain as they're learning the operations. It's a good way for students to be able to start thinking about what does math look like? What does adding look like? What does multiplying look like? And then they're better able to explain it. It can also help with visual learners. We've talked about that. And it's a great way to introduce the idea of what is addition, what is subtraction. Now, the downside to tape diagrams is that they are very inefficient. As you saw with the final slide, having to draw in 27 different things is not super efficient. Um, it's also limited when you get into more complex math. So using it at the beginning to introduce topics is, is fine, in my opinion. Um, use, trying to force it to work with really complicated algebraic expressions, I think the, um, the effectiveness of it does tend to break down. However, that's what tape diagrams are. That's examples of them using with the four basic operations. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.